Repeat these words after me, Sister Minnie. I take you, Dollar Bill. I take you, Dollar Bill. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better. For better. For worse. For worse. For richer. For richer. For poor. For poor. And in sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love. To love. Cherish and obey. Cherish and obey. To death us do part. To death us do part. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. And thereto I plight thee my truth. And thereto I plight thee my truth. The ring, please. And as much as you two have come before me to be joined in the holy state of matrimony, I now pronounce you man and wife. Those whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder.
I wouldn't have had this happen for anything in the world. Oh, it's not your fault, Carla. I'm not blaming you. I suppose when you're having a good time, everything goes. You happy? Mm-hmm. Come on, everybody, let's go cut the cake. Come on. Uh, yeah, let's cut the cake. Right, I'm I'm the well, I got to get Heavenly Father, we thank thee for all the blessings that we have received for the nourishment of our souls and body. Amen. Now that we have launched these two lovebirds on the sea of matrimony, the best part of the ceremony is yet to come. Now who will be the next two to cut the cake? That is to signify that they will follow in the footsteps of Sister Minnie and the good brother Dollar Bill. Cut the cake, Sue. You've got to make a wish, too. Yes, no, go ahead. Well, wait a minute. Why don't y'all give me a chance at it? Boy, I bet y'all could take my knife and stick it down in that cake and deal everybody a slice. Lord, I wish y'all just shut up and let the young folks I would like to remind you that this is a part of the wedding ceremony just as sacred as the other. Y'all are just in time to see the next two victims start out on them rough seas of matrimony. Uh, is I'm gonna get a piece of this cake or is I ain't? 
All right, ladies and gentlemen. In defense of my own reputation as a carbon man, I feel that I can say in the past I have exhibited perfect technique and attained satisfactory results in this distinguished profession. I just can't help laughing to myself when I think of all the strange people who go to make it up. Black Manhattan. What a place. You really love Harlem, don't you, Paul? Yes, there's so much to be done here. It's fairly screaming for leadership. And I let you lead the Mr. Bob Ashley. And I let you lead a man's inspiration, sir. Looking into the future, I just can't see any happiness without you. How dare you even think about it? That's being unfaithful. Oh, I couldn't be unfaithful to you if I wanted to be. If I did make a pass at another girl, just when my line was going good, I'd be certain to call her soon. I'd like to see you go into town with some other girl. Oh, it's no use. They'll never believe me. I'm a marked man. Everything I do and everything I say is so wrapped up in you, I'd be licked before I started. You don't mean to tell me you love me, Mr. Ashley. I don't mean to tell you anything else. I'm going to hold you to it, Mr. Forever. What's worrying you, baby? Oh, it's nothing you can do anything about. How do you know? You never tried. Oh, it's too involved. What's too involved? Come, speak up. Oh, let's forget it. I'm not letting anything spoil our happiness. You can't start keeping secrets from me now. You're worried about your mother's marriage now, aren't you? Yes. And Bob was so in love with him, I even think she would turn against me if she thought it would make him happy. We are going right in there now, and I'm going to tell her we ought to get married. But Bob... Please be careful how you speak to him. He's a hooker and hates you. Oh, yeah? Girl, honey, I take my robe off the bed. I'll hand him his robe off the bed. There's your robe, and I want to see you. I'll be right out, fella. What did he mean, fella? Nothing is eating anybody. Bob wants to tell you about our engagement. Engaged? <laughs> On what? On love. Did you ever hear of it? That's just what I expected coming from a dude like you. You expect the sweetest kid in town to move out of a comfortable home, to live with you on love, or do you expect to move in here on her? You know, Sue gave this whole thing the wrong approach by even suggesting that I give a tingle's damn about your consent. Well, what do you want from me, then? All I want you to do is leave my fiance alone. We don't believe that you're interested in Sue as a colonel. So while she still has to live under the same roof with you, I'm asking you kindly to stop him and off all over the house. Listen, you. I thought you knew when to keep a silver tongue on your head. But since you're going to play mudslinger, I can sling some too, see? Did you ever tell Sue how you raised money to keep you in school? I know Bob works every summer. That's what he tells you, but I got friends who know different, see? You got friends who know what? I bought the skirt in Saratoga who's been hanging her dough. The chicken buffalo you promised to marry. And many others I can lay hands on to testify I'm right if it comes to a showdown. You're a rotten liar. Please stop it, both of you. Hiding behind this kid isn't going to save your skin, sir. I'll make you crawl back into your box. Step aside, Sue. Mama should have known. She had to know sooner or later. Get her, Bob. That's why he gets his gun. That snake hasn't got guts enough to shoot anything. For my sake, please, Bob. Turn around, sucker. Start falling, sister. Oh, please, darling, don't. He was excited. He didn't know what he was saying. I promise I'll never even speak to him again if he 
he let him go. You can be a mighty brave guy when you're holding the zippers, doll. Yes, and I'm planning to let you have a load of the zippers, too. Please, for my sake. Is it only up and up you let that guy go? Hey, I mean... All right. Get out before I change my mind. I had to do something, Bob. He was going to kill you. You did something, all right. You put the okay on his dirt. But I couldn't let him shoot you, Bob. Sue. Sue, honey. in this district. We collect a lot of money for protection and there's enough for everybody if we carry out orders. But some of us get too smart for our own necks. That's why I'm here to talk to you fellas. Well, I'll speak for the other guys. I'll do the talking. Now, during the first three months, the take remained the same. All of a sudden, it dropped off $300 a day. How come? It's the churches. They got an organization here and told all the merchants in this district they didn't have to pay off. And a punk got the head of it who was aspiring for a political career. You know the punk? Do we know him? He's just like that, boss. The guy's going to marry his daughter. So that's how it is. Well, it's up to you to nix this guy, daughter or no daughter. I had a couple of men tail you to the racetrack. They report you dropped on the average of three C's a day. Where the devil are you getting this money? I can say the boss. Shut up, you. Shut up. Start talking, Wall Street. Dollar Bill is married to a woman who's been staking him to her husband's insurance. He's been dropping it at the races. That's right, boss. I didn't want to tell you because it's kind of a family affair. I'm through talking to you guys. I want action. Hello, Sue. Hello, boss. I tried to get you on the telephone several times, but you were still pouting. You ought to know that it's no use. I'll wait until you cool off and be right on your doorstep again. I don't blame you. It was partly my fault. It's nobody's fault, darling. It's just a matter of circumstance. Shall I drive you home? Home? That's the last place I want to go. Drive me all about. All about it is, my lady. Martini cocktails? 
Just like you like them, girl. Hungry? Uh, but I can't wait to eat. I've got to get home. Get home? That's all I ever hear. Aren't we going to be alone anymore? Oh, look at that. I don't like this freeze of car assignment any more than you do. But Kai insists that I tag along. Oh, I'm not talking to you, Jean. You know I'm crazy about the kid. And it burns me up when we separated so long. Well, at least I can count on my nose. What are you doing to me, kid? I call you up to the school, I get to run around, try to contact it home, no dice. Let's come over here. To tell you the truth, Dollar, it's the work I'm doing after school that keeps me so tired of. Work? What's that? Well, I don't like the idea any more than you do. But what am I going to use for money? Money? <laughs> Is that the only thing that's worrying you? What else is there for me to worry about? I've got good health and ambition. I've got you to love me. Anything I've got, baby, is yours for the asking. And to tell the truth, you don't even have to ask for it. Will that hold you for a couple of days, sugar? You're the sweetest daddy. I'm the last person to interfere in family affairs. But what kind of friend would I be to stand by and see your house burning down without telling you about it? Oh, out with it, Maud. We've had secrets before. Well, I'll make it short. You know Chick and my number. Mm -hmm. Well, he told me, knowing that I'm a friend of yours, he don't see why you don't know the dollar bill gambles every penny he can get his hands on. Either with the horses or the dice. He's the chippy chasing man that ever wore. He says that he, every penny that you have, he's going to find some way to jip you out of it. He says that... He's set enough to get himself thrown into sing things with slander. My dear, don't you know these nickel and dime chisels are always jealous of the man who can go out and make a decent living? My dollar has brains, and I give him credit. And I happen to know that he's in the grocery business, uh, uh, vegetables and stuff. All right, sister. I did my duty, and I hope I'm wrong for your sake. Oh, I appreciate your telling me what you hear, more. But don't let scandal worry you. I ain't gonna let it touch me. That must be me. It's me and him against the world. That's how it is, Mom. It is the emergency in our economic life. Not politics tonight, but major. All right, no politics. And I don't feel like swing music either. Okay, no swing then. better instantaneously. How should he be taken? Three times a day. Every day? Every day. For how long? Till death do us part. Now, Mama, don't allow the matter of $69 in the to disturb you. 
If you haven't got it, you haven't got it, and that's bad. That's not all. You're my little girl now. And how do you think it would sound people going around talking about Donald's girl got kicked out of school on account of that small change? But I haven't got them a minute. Please don't worry, Mother. Won't the little lady let you? I thank you no. Soon. Mother, I don't want his money, and please don't make me take it. The little girl is having a hard time running what belongs to you belongs to me, and vice versa. It's mighty hard with me if you don't finish school like I dreamed you would. After all, Sue, this money is as much your mother's as it is mine. It's a little interest on an investment we made. And I don't want you ever to feel bad taking money from me. All right, Miss Olive Then if Mama wishes that I'll take your money, you won't feel bad. There, now. The Lord knows I'll be a happy soul when you two decide to bear the hatchet and be more loving. I do the best I can. I know you do, dear. But it's Sue. Excuse me. You're letting yourself in for a lot of grief, Bola. You know these big-time rackets pay a lot of money for protection, and, and they get it, too. Don't tell me of the power of the rackets, which I can refute all your arguments. Oh, I know the federal boys will get them in the end, but they can cross up a lot of people before they're caught. I'm walking into this with my eyes wide open. To me, it's just the gangster's last stand. When they stoop to chiseling, hard-working, poor-colored people, they're stepping on my toes. Oh, if only the organizations will pull with me, everything will be all right. Oh, they're with you, all right. It's the first time in the history of Harlem they've ever been with anybody so unanimous. All you is whistle, and they'll follow. Good. The first time we show a solid front demanding our just desserts, protesting against injustices, the first time we sacrifice personal things for the progress of the whole, then we will see a new day. Not only for us Negroes here in Harlem, but everywhere. <laughs> I must remind you to incorporate that new message and that was an inspiration, Pa. Oh, I'm a Now, Pat, all you have to do is to pass the word along with the banners are ready to be picked up at the Liberty Printing Shop. Know where that is? Yes, I know. We have club dance cards printed there. Let's see now. What else did Bob ask us to do? Oh, nothing. Just lobby around a bit and pick up a unanimous vote like all the other organizations. Oh, uh, I have to meet Bob right after Sunday school. Now, how soon do you think all the girls will be there? Well, I said four o'clock. That means five. Not for everybody. To me, four o'clock means four o'clock. That speaks the voice of the new Negro. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're right. My experience with girls of any color is that it's always smart to be late. Oh, but I hope they don't keep operating because it makes him fantastic. I'm dying of thirst, too. This is that good to drink. Well, that's a little milky like box. Mix yourself a highball. <laughs> <laughs> Come along, Jackie. Let's raise the ice box. I'll get to bring you both of you, Jackie. Hello, Mr. Richard. Dollar bill to you, Alice. Don't be so far. Say, I took a squint of that basketball game you played with the New Jersey Dead. And believe me, your form was terrific. Oh, you like basketball? <laughs> what a form. You should be playing in the big leagues with that form. You were dynamite. Thank you. Glad you enjoyed the game. And to show you how much I enjoyed it, I'm going to throw a party for just us two. What do you say? I happen to have a boyfriend who wouldn't appreciate the idea of your throwing a party for just us two. Come on, don't be so old-fashioned. I'm not old-fashioned, Mr. Dollar Bill. There are ethics involved if you follow me. Follow you? That's the best thing I could do. You'll have to excuse me now. Jackie's waiting. I've got to be going. Well, it's the day to time you feel like using it. Just wait until Bob sees you in this dress. His heart's going to do a home run right up to his Adam's apple. <laughs> Listen, Minnie, you're a good cook and a kind-hearted woman, and I like you. And I got other things to think about besides tasting your cooking all day. Oh, don't be so grouchy, Daddy. I know you've got business worries, but Sunday's the only day we have together. Please taste the custard. All right, I'll taste it. Isn't it nice? Now leave me alone. Do I know you by just to be here beside you? Minnie, I need money. You haven't got it to give me. I got to think fast where I can get it from. Well, I do everything I can to help you. Listen, Minnie, I'm in no mood for cheap talk. I got ideas where I can get the money from. But I'm married now. My hands are tied. Do you mean some other woman, Dollar? There you go. Ask a question. Questions when I need real help, not lip service. Are you sorry that you married me, Dollar? 
When you mind your own business, I haven't got time to think. You gotta be careful what you say, so you won't be sorry. Shut up. Dollar. Quit mauling on me, will you? We are no radicals. We have no act to grind politically. We're not ticketing for any favors or privileges. We're not stump teaching against anything or anyone who lives within the law. But when a thing vitally concerns us, as does this bit of advantage being taken of Harlem Delta, when our shopkeepers are forced to pay racketeers for the privilege of operating legal businesses, when law-abiding citizens in our group are intimidated by hoodlums, then it is time for us to put forth a united effort to stamp it out. Bob, the girls and myself want you to know that we're all in accord with your sentence. It does my heart a lot of good kids to see you respond so readily. But I must warn you, it's a nasty job you're stepping into. Not exactly in line with your pink tees and coming out part. It's going to mean contact with people whom you've only read about. So if there's anyone afraid of realism, this is the time to back up. just itching for a chance to cut me down. After I sat down and map out a campaign for him to take in a hundred dollars a day haul, then nurse it along until it gets to five hundred dollars a day. Yes, I'm all over the place. Stand by and see him pull raids on my own people. Now he wants to murder. I tell you, he's after me. Well, what are you going to do? Man, why don't you tell them old fellas where to get off at? Yeah, and pick up your head in the Harlem River. Ah, oh, that's the trouble. You can't make good with those guys, but I'm going to make good. I'm going to make good for Dollar Bill. Harlem is my meat anyhow. I'm going to put the heat on those chisels. I'll show them who's running this territory. No, you're right. That's the way to go, man. Well, buddy, let's move. You work all day and all night. When the end of the week comes, get up the hole. You let these guys come in without fighting. Take away your hard earned money. I'm tired of working with us. I ain't going to do it no more. Listen to me all of y'all. It's all right for some to stand up there and shoot off his mouth. But what chance have we got with these guys? We can fight back. We outnumber them anyway. It ought to be done that for some folks. What about the police? They're always too late to do your head any good. You is right. It ain't as if we only fight these small time burglars up here. But they got powerful white folks back in the up. I tell you, you ain't got a chance. Either pay up or get out of business. I right, says keep on paying and you'll starve to death. So you want to get somebody killed? Well, what are we going to do about this? Let me get it. Let me get it. Let me get it. Oh, oh, hello, Mr. Bob. Listen to me. Don't 
pay any more shakedown money to these rats. Take a good look at the man who demands it of you. Stand by your guns and show these people that they can take advantage of you. We'll do the rest. Listen, mister, whoever you is, I found out a long time ago that a half a loaf is better than none at all. I also found out that it's useless to argue with a guy who's got a gun in his stomach. And unless you and your organization can keep them guys from coming around to collect, I don't see how we can help ourselves. There's laws in this country after all. They can't kill everybody. That's right. Yes, brother, but I'm thinking of me. I ain't no martyr. Yes, you are. You are sacrificing yourself and all the others through your college. You're helping these criminals in their crime against society. There'll be someone of this organization in your place of business who will be able to testify against these people. These small lieutenants of ours will save you the risk. All you've got to do is cooperate. between you and your daughter, Minnie. She's hot-headed, but she's your own flesh and blood. Don't you stand up for her. She isn't worth it. Hasty, Minnie. Sue! Let her go. I might have known I couldn't trust another woman around you, Dollar. Never mind, dear. 
you come into the room and lie down. And after you've rested a while, we'll flesh this whole thing out, won't we, girl? Of course we will. Meanwhile, I'll run in the bath. And I'll get us some hot milk. If it makes you feel any better to cry, cry, child. turned against you for that man while I will... Oh, no, you didn't. It's just as it should be. Well, Sue, all those splendid records, those sleepless nights. I know all that. But I'm at the mercy of friends. I've got to get a job. Which means we should get married right away. You could still... That is not so much. Why should all these miserable things happen to us? Such me, Bob. But here we are, and the future looks awfully dark. What are you going to do? I don't know yet. But I'll think of something. Hello. Is that you, Broadway? You'll be a sensation, honey. Broadway will see your name in life. If you don't believe me, just come to her at four o'clock. Funny she makes her living in show business and thinks it's too low for you. Perhaps she'll come around after a while. But I've done everything vague, pleaded, explained. Oh, what can I do? <laughs> She's your mother. She'll come to her senses. She'll forgive you. <laughs> Oh, 
Just as I was going to put that squeeze play on me, the Mason gang robbed him out. What do you think of that? Uh, that leaves you in control of the way, huh? And uh, that makes you the ball. Not so fast. Here comes the catch. You're right. The catch. Another guy. Barone. You ever hear of him? Uh, Detroit big shot. That's right. He's from Detroit. He's inherited this territory. Oh, Harlem is getting to be a regular freebie, ain't it? It has been, but it won't be anymore. Before those guys can find a way around, Dollar Bill is going to be the biggest man in these clubs. And muscling in, he's going to meet with severe punishment. I sure like the way you talk, Dollar. It makes us all feel more like men. It's bad enough when we have to push these guys around to get results. But when some bozo comes all the way from Detroit to crack the whip, it's not so good. It's worse than slave. <laughs> this is my territory, and I'm going to run it. I've started already. I sent a couple of the boys from Newark down to take care of that Jamaican fool who's been making stump speeches against me. I had to make an example out of somebody. <laughs> so I'll take them out. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. Look at me, home. Do you think a man that worked the way I do has got any right living in such a place? I work all day and night and for what? To hand over the profit to guys like Bruno. And there's no justice in this country. Listen, Jamaica. We didn't come for no sermon. We want that dough and we want it now. Quit stalling and get the dough. But I don't got no dough. Oh, so you're going to make it hard on yourself. King George hired coming here stealing from poor people. King George hired and persecuting my poor husband. Listen, you. Keep your flat nose out of this before I kick you. <laughs> Time you try to get up. Get out of town, you guys. You bowled everything up. Pick you up in Newark, Softy. When we get in a spot, we get out of it. And we don't care how. And don't forget that dough. Those guys left Jamaica's wife in a bad shape. This is an awful mess. Gee. You said something? Shut up. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. And Marone don't like the way you operate. No, the boss don't like you. I never even seen the boss. Why shouldn't they like you? Your reputation for being a straight shooter ain't so hot. What do you mean? I'm an all right guy. Didn't the other big shot tell you about me? That's just the trouble. You did. We've been following you around long enough to know that you spend it faster than you get it. And somebody's got to be cheated. If that's the case, we ain't the one, see? Be reasonable, fellas. What have you got on me? Nothing. But the boss wants 15 grand, he says, it's owed to him from this racket, and you're responsible. You tell your head man this is harm. And whatever Dollar Bill takes him from now on is his own business, see? That's what we call a double cross, fellas. We ain't kidding. You either pay for start train. What's the matter, Daddy? Something wrong? Oh, just some friends of mine paid me a visit. We're no friends of his, and this ain't no visit. It's a stick-up. They want $15,000. What are you going to do? Oh, I'll take care of it. You'll take care of nothing. No! Are you hurt? I'm sure I heard a shot down in the bathroom washing my hands. He was I scared and shot me to death. Sound like a gun battle. She wouldn't last through the ride. Give away, cold, never. 
every day. I'll know you'll say you've got plenty. You've a fortune in kisses. You can teach me what this is. I'm jealous of your lovely self. How you do, you, my dear? It's bad enough to get sick and die. But to have your life stuffed out like that. Mm. All the nice people get it in the neck. Yep, must be destiny. Same to some of I'm the fella who misses your tender lips. No honey to save the kiss for me. Oh, baby, save the kiss for me. job more than ever now. All out. Oh, I'll dress for the first show anyway. You certainly can take it. Let me help you dress. Did you get the other whiskey? Yeah. Got it right here in my pocket now. Right here. Well, the gin is behind the armchair. Go get it. I show is your right hand man this evening. Mm. Picking rabbits and chickens and stuff. Are you on, boss? That's why I keep the knives and forks. All right, comedian. All right, comedian. Just for that, I'm going to see that this evening that all these eats and drinks just pass as you bark. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you did, all right. <laughs> Max has got what he calls the wake ticket. Sometimes he plays as many as two, three nights. He goes around to the other tickets and checks off all the most likely, and then invites himself to the wake his master serve one of the <laughs> Don't you think that we should start things to moving the way that Sister Manny would have liked? You're right. I'll get Sister Pat to start things by playing the piano.
You know. Sue. Let's go in and hear the same. Miss Sue, you really need a little rest. Rest? How can I rest when all of the caravans are long my mother is dead? I was in the wrong. I shouldn't have left her just because she's happy. I left her when she needed me most just because she's happy. I wish she would slap me again. But she can't. She can't. I killed her. <laughs> Boy, that was a killing. You know, I'll tell you that. You know I got the great the occasion with my piano. Cause I don't play me cheap now. I am up and study to be the man of honor. And when I was elected, I was going to remember my friends. <laughs> yeah, when you get elected, give me the key to the... Uh, the Harlem Banks, I know. Uh, scotch and soda, my dear man. <clears throat> I thought gin was your drink, Pat. What do you have to buy? I still say scotch and soda, my dear man. Grandpa, honey. Yes, Al, you want me? You know I want you. Come here a minute, will you say goodbye? Yes, Daddy, I'm coming. <laughs> Boy, I never knew a grand prize could be such a bitter pill to swallow. I mean, a sweet pill to swallow. <laughs> Leave me out. I can stand anything for money. <laughs> Boys, I want you to meet the future Mrs. Dollar Bill Rich, who's going to make me a loving wife, and she don't have to guess about me. Anybody can look at Dollar Bill and tell that he's crazy about Clarabelle. You don't have to brag about it. <laughs> That's a natural couple. What? I mean, the couple uh, looks natural. Uh, that's what they say about dead folks, fool. Uh, what that means is that uh, Clarabelle is scrub. Dollar Bill is simply rambunctious. What? You better get out of here, Wall Street, before you get hurt. Oh, Wall Street. You're wasting your time, pal. Well, that's 
nothing we can do here. Let's go over to Morgan and see what she has to say. Yes, let's get out of here. Everywhere I look, I can see that man. He's poisoned every corner in this room. Holland, don't you, Paul? Yes. There's so much to be done here. The fellas screaming for leadership. 